Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the Newbrook Workshop. Now, the wardrobe in my bedroom, uh, in the new house, uh, had no drawers at all. It had two lots of hanging rails. And <laughs> with the few clothes I've got, I only need one hanging rail. So, what I've done is converted the lower half to a set of drawers. And these drawers are made of oak at the front, uh, the sides and the back are MDF and so is the bottom. And this uses that construction technique of mitre joints folded for the two rear joints and the two joints that go into the front here are dominoed. And I've got these on Accuride soft close runners so it all works uh, rather well. Now this is one of my longer videos, but I thought I'd show you the whole process in one video. I'll either skip or rush through some of the less demanding parts of the project, uh, but just show you the key elements. Now I'm going to start by sorting out my oak, which will be for the drawer fronts. The oak I've got is uh, sawn, it's English oak, uh, and these pieces are about 28 millimetres thick. Uh, but they're all sort of wiggly, so the finished thickness is probably going to be around about 20 millimetres uh, in the end. So I've got to now look at these boards, see if there are any defects which I really can't absorb into the structure. For example, a defect like this one here, I can absorb into the scheme of things if I were to use some uh, epoxy filler in there, and that would be okay. It goes all the way through to the other side, and if you look on this side, you can see it looks pretty ugly. But again, with filler, it may well be a feature, but one shouldn't be worried about having some defects in your wood. I'm just doing the final cleanup of the edges on these pieces now before I cut them to width. I have actually sharpened all my planes, uh, given them a little tweak, so I can get some really nice, clean shavings. Well, that's good. I'll just remark this with my face edge marking. So that one's done. And just a reminder for anyone who hasn't seen the video, I've actually put some 20 millimeter holes and I've used the chamfer tool so that I can put one of these pups in there. It's nice and flush to the surface. Means now that I've got my wood supported, not only in the vise here, but also just there. And I think you can see how I've got my two CMS units set up so that that one is acting as a, an outfeed table for this one. Right, this, this board is about 138 millimetres across here, and it's only 18 millimetres wide. You can still uh, thickness it, uh, provided you've got a, a good reference edge uh, on the machine. Now I'm using this uh, melamine coated MDF, which I cleaned up and you would have seen in a previous video in order to do the sides and the backs uh, for the drawers. Uh, and it seems silly to waste it, it's good material. It's uh, about 18 millimetres thick, uh, which will work out fine. And I've done one cut already, and you've seen what a nice clean line the TS55 makes. It's got the uh, 48 tooth blade in there. And I've just marked up for my next cut. Now I need to show you this. Ordinarily on the TS55, there's a a hole here and you can see the saw blade and a lot of people have covered this over because it makes dust collection so much better and I've just done the same and the way I've done this as a temporary measure is I've used a piece of cardboard there and over that 
I've put a piece of uh, sticky tape. So that's going to stay in there and I've used it once already and it really does improve dust collection. Now bear in mind the TS55 is an excellent saw as far as dust collection goes but because this is MDF I want to be extra careful. And talking about uh, being extra careful I use the 3M VersaFlow almost always when I cut MDF unless it's a small piece. The battery pack goes around the waist and then there's a tube that goes from the helmet down to the battery pack at the back which you can see I can start it by pressing the button like so and then I can put the integral ear defenders on and drop the mask and that's me protected. And I hope you see the quality of the cut, nice clean lines left behind, absolutely perfect. I don't know if you remember that edge breaking set I got from Axminster not so long ago. They came in a set of four. Uh, well, I'm using one of those to uh, round over these edges very gently. Uh, you can see I've put some oak edging on here, which just glued on and uh, that will make the top of the draw backs and sides just look a little bit tidier rather than having the bare MDF edge. Now I'm just about to do the channel to take the bottoms for the drawers and I want uh, the bottom of the channel as it were uh, to be nine millimeters away from the draw bottom itself and so I've got a nine millimeter drill and it's nine millimeters along its whole length and I've used that to set my fence to what will be the closest part of the cutter. So that means that I know that when I do my uh, trenching cut now, that's going to be nine millimeters away from that bottom edge of the draw. And because this is MDF essentially, I, I want a, a reasonably large uh, gap just to give the, uh, the bit that ends up on this side uh, enough strength so it doesn't break away during the glue up process. So I've cut the channels in the sides and backs and now these are the draw fronts I'm about to do. Now I've decided which side I want to be on the inside or the outside. And I've actually put a, a, a very thin coat of Osmo Poly-X on the inside of these pieces so that when I cut the channel for the draw bottom uh, there will be no risk if I were to do this oil later of the oil going into the channel where I want the glue to go. So I've done that already. My face edges are marked so I know which is going to be the draw bottoms. Now you notice I've put a piece of masking tape on the fence of the router table and on it I've marked two lines and those two lines indicate to me the start and the end of my cut because I don't want the channel for the base to go beyond uh, the side pieces of the drawers. You know, I don't want it going all the way through. One could do that and then fill it with uh, little bits of wood but I'm not going to do that. So I've got a start and a stop uh, mark and I'm all set up ready. And one other thing to point out is because I'm doing a trenching cut uh, the uh, dust extraction from the rear here will have no effect. It's the dust extraction going down through the table from the base of the router, which is important. So that uh, hose that would normally be connected at the back, I've blocked it off. I've put uh, this on there, a bit of tape there, so that this plays no part. And it gives extra suck here so that all my dust is going to be taken away. So there's that channel and there's no, no dust around the place and that's because I've blocked off that, that hose. Right, I'm all set up for the mitre cuts now on my sides and the backs. And I'm using uh, the Capex, 45 degrees there. Now I always clamp uh, wood down when I'm doing these long mitre cuts. It's very difficult to keep it absolutely still just holding it with one hand and also this is melamine it's very slippery so I've got a clamp there and a clamp here. I really want these cuts to be really really nice. Uh, it's a, a really nice cut. Do remember that this channel is on the inside <laughs> and so make sure you cut your mitres appropriately.
Now I've started with the sides, so the way I'm doing it is putting a mitre on each end and then I'll cut to length with a straight cut uh, later. Now getting the length of the backs right is really important and what I've done is I've measured from the one mitre that I've done which is on the other end uh, to the place where I expect a line to be broken by the, the mitre cut on the end and I've scribed that line I'm now going to do a trial cut and I hope that my cut will be just a fraction to the right of that line and then I'm going to adjust the position of my wood a fraction until I then do a, a cut which is absolutely through that line and then I'm going to put a stop at the other end so that I can do repeat cuts for all of the pieces for the backs of the drawers. I started that cut and I'm about a millimetre too shy so in order to get that right I'm going to position this stop where the end of the board is at the moment and I'm now going to move it that way by the equivalent amount. Okay. And it's probably difficult for you to see, but I have now exactly cut that line that I've described. And then I'm going to finish my cuts. And it's always good woodworking practice to do an absolute final check before committing everything else. And that is absolutely spot on. So I'm now cutting the sides. Now these pieces I've got a mitre at both ends, so this is going to form two sides. I've got my stop set up and all I've got to do is a straight cut here, turn this round and do a straight cut for the other piece. And do let the saw come to a stop before you lift it out. So there's one piece done. And I just turn this round, push it against the stop, make sure it's firmly against the back there. Um, and by using this method, you're going to get absolutely consistent sides every time. Now, if you're using melamine, do take care because these cut uh, edges where the mitres are uh, can be very sharp because you've got that very thin line of melamine at the top there and it's, it can be almost razor to sharp. Right I'm set up to cut the draw bottoms and I'm using uh, the new path fences here. Um, I've got two thicknesses of draw bottom here and I'm all set up. I've got my stop set so I can do multiple cuts. So there's my first pair cut like this. Slide that along so it hits the stop. And I've got to trim this for width, which I'll do shortly. Now I'm just getting ready to uh, do the domino joints. Uh, the, these joints will be between the draw sides and the draw fronts. And I'll be using 6mm thick by 40mm long dominoes. Now, as my draw fronts are relatively thin, uh, I'm only going to allow the domino to go in 12mm. Remember, when you set it at 12 on the domino machine, the actual depth of cut is a little bit deeper. So although I could use the next setting up 15, which is still less than the thickness of my draw front, uh, that 15 would end up being more like 16 and a half. And with the hydraulic pressure, when you bring everything together, it could force glue out through the front surface of the drawers. And I don't want that. So hence 12 millimeter setting here. Now, in order to work out exactly where uh, my dominoes should go in the front, you need to take account of the following. First of all, my draw fronts and my draw backs have a difference in uh, width because we have allowed for the draw slides which are on each side of the draw. 
and that allowance in my case is 13 millimetres. And that means that the drawback is 13 millimetres on each side, narrower than the draw front. So 13 there and 13 there. My draw sides are 18 millimetres thick, and I want the domino in the draw sides to be in the dead centre. So half of that is 9. So 9 and 13 is 22. So my depth from this surface, when I do uh, the domino joints in the draw fronts, should be 22. So I've got my 13 millimetres on this side. Then I've marked the thickness of my draw sides, which is 18. So it's 13 and 18. And then the halfway point is 22. And that is where the uh, domino will be going, just there. And I've set that up uh, to illustrate this. You wouldn't need to do these lines at all. The only line one needs to make to do these uh, joints is the little pencil line on the top here, which is where the center of the domino will be placed. And this will be held in the vise uh, to do those cuts. Now I've set my domino up as follows. The height here on this scale, right on this scale, is 22. And that means that the center of the domino, as it comes out here, will be 22 millimeters underneath this faceplate. I've set my depth of cut here to 12 millimeters. My width of domino is in the narrow setting. And I always use the narrow setting except in one or two very odd circumstances. But I always have this set at narrow. So my domino is set up. Now we can do those cuts in the draw fronts. So we're all set up. I've got my pencil line here. The writer's ready to go. Position it on that line. And away we go. And if you look carefully here, there's that cut on that center line. Now I'm just going to check the depth of this cut. Now that was nominally 12 millimeters and it's reading 13.6. That's why you have to be careful because when you set the depth of cut on a domino machine, there is always allowance for glue beneath the domino. Now, at some stage, one does need to verify that the various markings are in the right place. This is one of my side pieces. The bottom is there, the bottom is here. Uh, and I'm just going to check, before I start cutting these, that yes, uh, my pencil line, which I have here, is in the centre of the domino that I've already cut in the front. So I'm good to go with that one. And I'll do the same check with the other pieces as well. As I'm now doing the domino joints in the sides, I've uh, changed the setting uh, of the machine and I've now got my depth of cut set at 28. And the theory being that 28 plus 12, which is the previous depth of cut, makes 40. My dominoes are 40 in length. My width of cut is the same, it's on the narrow setting. But this time, I've changed the height scale here. So this now reads nine because my stock is 18 millimeters thick and I want the cut in the middle. And there's that cut and my setup here so that I've got uh, a nice easy way of doing these cuts is I've got one of my path hats, piece of wood made in the workshop, goes on top of a tall dog there I've got a spacer just so that this other end hangs beyond the bench. And now I can do my cuts. Now my drawers are not having handles. They're going to have a little cutout like this uh, at the top. So you put your hand in there and grab to open and close the drawer. Uh, now in order to make all five drawers identical, uh, I've made up this template. Unfortunately, I didn't have a piece of wood quite the same length as my draw fronts. But it doesn't matter. I've got the dead center of my pattern. My pattern was cut out very simply. I, I marked it all up and drilled a 20 millimeter hole here, 20 millimeter hole there, uh, cut through uh, here uh, to get the worst of the rubbish away and then trimmed that up in the router. Uh, just rounded these corners over and there's my template. Uh, and this distance between here and here 
uh, is about 110 millimetres. My, each of my pieces of draw front have been marked dead centre and so the idea is using my centre line which is on here. So I'm going to line this up with the centre line of the draw front with the centre line of the pattern and I'm then going to put a clamp at each end and this front face is going to be flush. So I'm going to put a clamp here that's there just loosely at the moment because I've got to do a slight adjustment and then this one at this end and the reason why the clamps at the very end is this is going to go on the router table in a minute and I've got a flush cut uh, trimmer which is going to cut out this piece but I'm going to take the worst out uh, before I do that so here we go just tighten it up that's dead center that's almost flush that's flush there flush there flush 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 good still dead center tighten up and tighten up now uh, using uh, the drill I'm going to drill a hole there a hole there uh, using the jigsaw I'm going to take most of the rubbish away and then take it to the router table and this is a, a perfect time to use my uh, 12 millimeter FAMAG uh, Forstner cutter here uh, for the first time doing a proper bit of woodwork. So I'm going to drill two holes, one there and one there. So there are the two holes done. I'm now going to uh, take out the majority of the waste with the jigsaw. So let's rough that out and I'm now going to take it to the uh, router table using my flush trim cutter. And there that is, just a little bit of sanding and that will be perfect. I'm now using the Axminster edge breaking uh, cutter. This is the 2.5 millimeter one in the set. Uh, and what I'm doing is uh, just breaking the edges of the draw fronts. I can do uh, the back here at the top, the front, uh, the bottom uh, at the front, uh, and the two uh, sides, uh, both at the rear and front. Absolutely lovely, including the ends. I'm just doing a, a dry run now just to make sure that everything comes together as it should uh, and also to check that my sizing for these base panels is right. And now I've got my square in here and you'll have to trust me on this. Uh, these sides are uh, square to the front and also square uh, to the back so it's come together square I need to explain what this thing is at the back here and I'll show you now if I were to try and clamp up uh, the sides where they go into the front in order to make the domino joints good here and here then this mitre joint at the back here could open because it's at an angle as I squeeze against this back piece it could force this side piece out so I've made this uh, rudimentary frame uh, and the distance between there and there is exactly the distance uh, or should be exactly the distance uh, that I have across the back here and that means now if I apply pressure across here uh, these side pieces cannot come out and I've made this from all sorts of odds and ends I had knocking around it looks a bit flimsy but it's not and it's going to do the job perfectly well and I've made it large enough for the biggest of the drawers uh, and it's perfectly easy to use it for the narrow drawer. Now the gluing up of these drawers is straightforward uh, but you do need to take care. Now the very first thing I've done is I've taken my two dominoes in this case that I need and I've put a groove down each side of them and the reason for that is that we're going to be putting dominoes in the ends of these pieces of MDF and one of the problems you get is that hydraulic locking that's when the glue is stuck in the bottom of the hole and it can't get out because you're trying to uh, knock the domino in uh, it then causes the wood to split or the MDF rather to split 
So by putting that groove in, it does give an escape path for the glue. And I'm going to actually start this process by putting the dominoes into uh, the end pieces of the MDF. And the reason for that is simple. The next part of the gluing up process is using our folded mitre gluing technique. And then that's then followed uh, by getting the final domino connection into the front. And uh, by this stage, of course, we've got our masking tape holding the mitre joints together. And so uh, better to get those dominoes in now. It'll be less risky. And when you're putting in dominoes in to MDF, do it a little bit at a time. Don't try and whack them in in one go. Just do it slowly. That allows the glue, which is becoming under pressure, to ease past the domino. You've got to make, take care not to damage the mitered ends here because it's quite delicate. So having done that, we're now going to set up to do the uh, joining of the mitres. Now, it's easier this time to make sure all these pieces of wood are up the right way so the channel is in the same plane because we've got this strip along the top. So I'm going to lay this down get my straight edge and now I'm going to line these up and have a very slight overlap here and put the masking tape on. Very slight overlap. that one and move along up to here. It's lined up, very slight overlap. So with the masking tape on, I'm now going to flip this over and I've got to do this quite carefully. Now I'm using a straight edge to help me keep these pieces together. Once I get them upright, it's fairly straightforward. So that's that. So now I'm confronted with these joints, where my base is going to go, and then of course I have to unite the top. So the first thing is, is to get some glue into here. Now I've put the glue in the mitre joints and where the uh, base is going to go. I'm now going to put some glue into uh, this piece as well. Now because this is, apart from this front piece, all man-made materials, MDF, which is not really going to expand or contract to any degree that's worth worrying about, the whole of the base can be glued in. And that means that the whole assembly is going to be much stronger. In fact, the majority of the strength for this comes from the base. And now we're going to introduce the base. And it really does help when one does this to try and get this base even from left to right. Right, so I've got that even at this stage. Now all we do is lift up here and almost magically... That, that masking tape is keeping that uh, joint nice and tidy. So we've brought that up together. I'm just going to put some glue on the end of the MDF up here. Now it's very important when you do a glue up like this to try and get the right amount of glue. And people say to me, well, what is the right amount of glue? Well, it's, it's the right amount. It's just enough to do the job and not so much that it all oozes out. Now, mine, I can see, is oozing out a little bit, so I've used a little bit too much.
Now, you remember what I said about the, uh, my worry about the mitre joints here failing if uh, we start clamping up. So I'm now going to uh, just uh, take account of that and use my gadget. Here's my gadget. I can now use a little bit of force here. Making sure the base is going to come, come into the right, right place. Now, even though we've taken a lot of care, making sure things are cut squarely and so on, uh, there is still scope for error. So it's a good idea to check uh, at this stage to make, things, make sure things are as they should be. And you remember we put some Osmo on the insides of these before we cut the dominoes. I'm just giving a, a little bit of rub there just to get that down to a little bit of bare wood. It's not desperate. Um, and that will allow that glue line to be a little bit more successful. Well, that's now spot on, so I can go and have a nice cup of tea now. And the key thing to remember about getting things nice and square is to make sure that panels like this are cut perfectly square. And I use my custom track saw cutting station which I created with the path guide system. So it came out perfectly square. And I, I don't know if you can see that, but that is absolutely spot on. Now I'm using Accuride 3832 uh, soft close draw runners and uh, four of the drawers uh, 450 millimeters in length and the top drawer uh, is going to be 500 millimeters in length. I've actually stolen the 500 uh, runner uh, from something else I made and uh, replaced it with a 450 so I end up with uh, four 450s and a 500. Now the great advantage of these runners is that they are really really good quality and of course they're really easy to fit as you've seen me do many times before. Now, in order to get them set up correctly, uh, one needs to have on either side of the wardrobe a frame which will hold the draw runners. And the frame will have rails, and each rail will take a draw runner, and there'll be uh, a pair of styles, one on either side, something like this, and the draw runner will fit across there. And there'll be five of those uh, rails. Uh, in between the two styles on each side and they, they will be identical and these will be packed out uh, from the inner sides of the wardrobe in order to get them exactly the right distance apart and then there'll be a nice finishing piece of solid oak at the front to hide the front of the frames on the left and on the right. Now as always I'm going to use the domino to do the jointing on the frame because it's so quick and easy uh, and I'm going to be using the trim stop so that I can put in all of the uh, dominoes in the ends of these rails without having to mark them up. Before using the domino do the usual checks. First of all make sure you've got the width setting correct. I've got my depth setting set at 20 because that's the uh, thickness of my stock and on that setting it means the uh, domino will be halfway in between at the 10 millimeter centre mark. And my depth of cut here is set on 20 because I'm using 40 millimeter dominoes. And now I can whip through these in no time at all. Now when it comes to marking up for the uh, domino slots in the uh, styles, uh, I like to clamp them together so that in pairs and so that they will absolutely match each other. And I've set this up so it's uh, at right angles here. This is a nice right angle. And uh, I can't sing the praises enough of these small lightweight uni clamps uh, made by Bessie uh, because they are absolutely perfect for this sort of thing. They're light, 
quick and easy to use and everything works so well. So I'm just going to mark this up and then I can do the dominoes in here. After you've measured the exact position and marked it in one place, then carry that line across using a square like this and note that I've only done the two opposing faces of each of the styles. So that's a pair of styles, that's a pair, so it's opposing faces there and there. And so I've got all my stock here. Um, I've got these par hats here, uh, a distance piece so that the front edge where I'm about to do the cut is over the edge of the table. And that's it. All I've got to do now is to glue it together. So it's glue up time. Now at this stage, do make sure that you use uh, the rule of the face side being always in the same plane uh, because it's really important. Give it a little bit of clamping pressure just to complete the process and then check for square. Um, you might not be able to see, but that is absolutely spot on. That too is spot on. So is that. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so good, but, but there we go. If it's not quite square, then uh, there is a bit of wiggle room on a domino. And you could, for example, supposing this one were not quite square, give it a bash there to get or there to get it square. Um, and if the whole thing, everything is slightly out of square, uh, then you can adjust the clamps by moving them at an angle like so, uh, just to bring something round or the other way to bring it round the other way. So uh, squaring things up is not a difficult task. Anyway, I'm happy with all of that. So I'm just going to leave these clamps for a, just a few minutes, just enough for that glue, uh, just to start to bite. Uh, and then I can take these clamps off and use them on the next frame. Rather than making my frames out of thicker wood, I've actually used a packing piece on the back of the frame just to bring uh, the frame forward of the hinge mechanism for the doors. And in my case, the, the two doors have different hinges. So uh, this one has a very narrow packing piece, and this one has a, a thicker packing piece. I'm now in the process of starting to fit the Accuride uh, draw runners and this is uh, absolutely so easy. Um, I've made my design such that the bottom of the draw runner is going to be flush with these rails which I've put in and all I've got to do now is just to make sure uh, the front is lined up with the front of the frame and hold this in place. And I'm just going to mark uh, where I need to drill holes for the draw runner screws. Now the draw runner screws I use come from Screwfix and uh, they are hidden on the Screwfix website. Uh, if you put draw runner screws in the search criteria, uh, you do not find draw runner screws. Um, I'll try and remember to put the part number for the screws I'm using uh, on this video for you. So I'm using just one of these as a pattern so I can go down and mark where I want my holes to be and by doing it this way rather than drilling straight through with the uh, draw runner in place uh, this stops all the debris from going into the mechanism of the draw runner so I've done those using that one as the as the template. Uh, the one at the top is the 500 millimeter draw runner, which I've pinched from something I'd already made and I've replaced it with a 450 one. Now I'm just gonna drill these holes. This is a Centrotech gadget uh, made by Festool. Uh, there are many other makes which do a similar job. And basically it's designed to center on uh, a hole. As if I wanted to drill a hole through there, I would then use this to do it. But it just so happens that um, I've got it fitted and 
it's set at the correct depth so I can set this up very easily to drill my three holes for the draw runner screws. And once that's done, I can now introduce my draw runner with a draw runner screw. Now, I've set the torque uh, reasonably low on this. I don't want to strip the wood. There we go. Now these Accuride runners are nicely packed when you receive them. They're very easy to get going. Just take out that piece there, put it to one side, get it in place. Now at the rear of the uh, part that goes onto the frame, there are a pair of holes there and I'm using some 3.5 by 16 screws straight in. And you don't have to buy any special screws. These came from Screwfix. There we go. It's a good idea to try not to get any sawdust or detritus into these parts of the mechanism uh, because uh, these are the important bits which do the self-closing function. And of course, no project is complete unless I put my Osmo on it. I'm using Osmo Poly X Gloss. Uh, its code number is 311. Uh, I'm brushing it on and then I wipe it off uh, with a piece of my uh, rag. And uh, it's so easy to apply. Now with something like a drawer like this, uh, you could actually get away with just one coat because my drawers are inside a cupboard. But if you want to put two coats, it's no problem at all. It will look even better, of course. And I'm just wiping off the excess with my workshop cloth. Making sure it's nice and even. There we go. And I shall leave this to dry overnight. There we go. Look at that. Absolutely lovely. The wood has really come to life. And fitting this part of the drawer runner on the drawer sides is really easy. I've drawn a centre line for this part, uh, referenced from the bottom of the drawers. All of my uh, various uh, activities on this drawer uh, are always referenced from the bottom of the sides, the back or the front. And in my case, I'm going 23 millimetres from the bottom to there. And that means that the, the whole mechanism uh, is set up so that the base of this is level with the bottom of the drawer and on my frames uh, the base of this is level with the bottom of those rails. So having drawn my line I'm going to use the screw hole which is the end here and this is the adjustable one and for now at this stage a screw hole which is elongated that way towards the back of the part. And all one then does is get this lined up with the centre line. There's no need to pre-drill. And that screw goes in very easily. And I'll put just one more in here towards the back of the slotted hole that goes that way. My screw goes in on that centre line. And that, that's it. Uh, when the drawer is being fitted, we might need to make an adjustment. And then once that adjustment is done, we can put a couple more screws in. Now, all of these parts are identical. There's no left or right, they're all identical. So you don't need to take any care uh, when removing these from the main body of the runner. Well, I've just screwed the frames in, so left hand, right, I'm sorry, you can't quite see the right hand one. And you can probably see the hinge here. I've allowed that the drawer fronts will go past the hinge on this side and also the one on the other side. I'm now going to do a, a trial fitting of the first of the drawers. This really is the moment of truth, of course. Well, that's it. The soft close works. The drawer fits. 
And this top one, if you remember, is the one with the 500 millimeter uh, slides because I wanted it to come out beyond the edge of this shelf here. In this position, it soft closes. I've got to put a fillet on the right and on the left, which I'll do once all the drawers are in, so I can then measure and get it just right. Well, let's try another drawer. Now, when you're pushing a drawer in for the first time, you will meet a bit of resistance, and you just gotta work through that resistance so that the mechanism engages itself. And that's the last of the drawers in, and there's that soft close mechanism coming into play. Um, I've got to cut these two strips that go at the sides. They're going to be solid oak uh, just to hide the ordinary wood which is behind there. And they'll go from the bottom all the way to the top. And I've got to cut out tiny little notches for the hinges. Now I have to remember that should I need to take one of these doors off, I have to be able to get at these hinges completely. The ones on this side have got those little uh, quick release uh, tags at the back. So therefore my pieces of wood that go left and right have to be able to be removed easily. So what I'm going to do is, once they're cut to size, uh, they will be screwed in from the side. One, one screw at the top, one at the bottom. Well that's it, I've now put in the uh, two strips, one on the left, one on the right, with a tiny cutout uh, where the hinges go. And if I need to take a door off, I just undo those two screws, remove this piece of wood at the edge here, and then I can get at the hinges fully. Now, this top drawer I owe to my favourite comedian, Michael McIntyre, a British comedian, absolutely superb guy. This is my man drawer. And a man drawer is a space where chaps like us put all those things that we think are very precious and very important. They get shoved in here, normally at the front, and they gradually work their way to the back till eventually you haven't a clue what on earth is in there. And the purpose of a man drawer is that it's your private space. And if ever your other half comes along and looks in the man drawer and makes any comments about it, you ignore them. So if I want a pair of cufflinks, they'll be in here somewhere. If I want that leftover euro change that I got last year, it'll be in here somewhere together with the two dollar notes that I think was 10 years ago, and also that old pen knife, that little tiny pen knife that I had when I was a little boy, that will go in here somewhere. But the most important thing you keep in your man drawer are those things that you just don't know where else they should go and you haven't got the guts to throw them away. That's the purpose of a man drawer.